card. And here we are, <laughs> Misha Saffron, heartstring healer, singer, songwriter. And I am really surprised every time I do a new episode that we are, the numbers are getting higher and higher, kind of like my age. <laughs> <laughs> but today is number 23, Passing Joy Around the World, talking about coexistence of joy, pain, and the truth of it all. Um, currently live streaming into my private women's Facebook group. So this is the first time they've had someone, I, and I don't know if, if you use, what pronouns do you use, Gabriel? Uh, actually, I don't have a preference. Anything is fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm um, just delighted that my group has normally seen women this whole time. You're the first <laughs> man to show up in my group. And, well, I'm honored. Um, <laughs> Thank and you. I think they're going to get a lot out of this conversation. So, um, and those of you who are listening on Podbean, um, you know, I want to in, uh, in, encourage you to interact, to ask questions. If I ask my, my guest, Gabriel, a question, I would love for you to answer the question inside the comments of the Podbean. If you're on Facebook and my Facebook group, I would also love for you to answer whatever questions I ask Gabriel to the best of your ability for your own life experience. And then for those of you who are watching the replay on YouTube, again, you can put comments under the video. Be sure to like the video. Um, and any of you who have not yet been to my YouTube channel, I will post that link there as well. Please like the channel, subscribe, um, like the videos. Uh, it's important for my guests to have the exposure and support um, from all of us. So I wanna thank you all for that. My computer's being a little slow right now. So I wanted to share with you um, the slides that I created to introduce Gabriel, um, but it's gonna take me a minute, so you'll all have to be patient. And I just want to um, start with saying, hello, Gabriel Valentino, welcome. Thank How you, are you? <laughs> oh, I'm doing wonderfully. I'm just feeling resplendent right now. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm looking at snow and usually I have a different mindset about snow because it's cold and that bothers my body, but it's also so beautiful. And mm -hmm. I got to see a fox run across the backyard earlier today. Oh, and wow. I also got to see two beautiful deer just sitting comfortably in the snow. Well, I, okay. I don't know if they were comfortable. They looked <laughs> comfortable. I didn't ask them. I was not able to say, dears, how are you today? <laughs> so, but I, I am doing absolutely um, phenomenal. And this is part of why I really appreciate my topic for my podcast, which came to me as a light back in the spring after George Floyd's murder, because it was like, I was depressed, I was upset, I was angry. And I've been like that for years about a lot of different things, but especially the way black lives are treated. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, am I not allowed to feel joy if I'm feeling anger and disbelief and that there are these injustices? And I was like, wow, there's truly the necessity of this coexistence. We, we, we are gonna deplete ourselves if we live fully in the anger and the frustration and we need the joy and the laughter and the love to be able to fully support the causes we stand for, to fully mm -hmm. embrace the people we love, and to fully have compassion for those that we may not love, <laughs> you know? And so this podcast kind of became this explosion of, instead of just passing joy around the world and tools to create that joy in your life, it was like, wait, let's acknowledge and embrace the challenging stuff too. And then we can that much more fully feel um, the joy in our lives. So let me just take a quick moment to introduce Gabriel to all of you wonderful women in my group. So this is podcast number 23 and Gabriel Valentino is here with me today. And Gabriel is the founder of Umami Memories. Am I saying that right, Gabriel? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. And Umami Memories, um, has a tagline and I think it's beautiful savoring story song and soul and you can see his his diagram down in the far uh, corner there so Gabriel was born into a family of Panamanian um, immigrants in the Chicagoland area where he currently calls home Valentino grew to discover that he loved the elation of delicious food 
the transformative spirit of music, the evocative magic of words, which clearly he is good at, and the celebration of cultures. The experience is born from when those loves blended eventually became fond memories that would warm the soul for a lifetime. The desire to capture and share those memories led to the creation of Umami Memories. Whoops, there it goes. In his spare time, uh, Gabriel makes his own Umami Memories, inspired by the excitement of exploring neighborhoods on a leisurely day, the swell of happiness at the birth of a clever or insightful phrase. Oh, I'm a word person too. The serendipity of connecting with people, the bliss of discovering or writing an astounding song, and the euphoric trans transcendence experienced from a soulful meal. So Gabriel, tell us what that means for you. What does that mean? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Tell us more about you, your creation, and yeah, what it means for you and how it relates to potentially this coexistence. Sure, definitely, thank you. So the first thing I wanted to say again, thank you for having me. I truly appreciate this experience. And this is a wonderful platform and a wonderful show full of wonderful people mm -hmm. who are in the Facebook, Facebook group now and in the future. So I thank you for that. Thanks. Now, the coexistence of joy and pain. I love that title in and of itself because it's very evocative. And in a sense, it's very true. Mm -hmm. Like I believe that they both are intimately intertwined with one another. Because in one way, how would we be able to recognize joy, for example, or recognize pain without really knowing what the opposite actually feels like or looks like or even smells like or tastes like? Mm -hmm. um, it's just like they both are so, they both, they balance off of each other. You can't have one without the other because otherwise, seemingly, they both would cease to exist. With exactly. A, Point well made. Totally. Totally. With umami memories in particular, I am trying to create those, create and allow others to both experience and to share those experiences, mm -hmm. those ideas and concepts that revolve around like music and food and family and experience and the word mm -hmm. that just bring those feelings of joy, of transcendence. Mm -hmm. Like, ha have you ever experienced, like, uh, have you ever had like an out of body experience where you're so? overtaking with joy or with happiness or you're in the process of creating creating something or just doing something or being in a space where Absolutely. it seems yeah it just seems as if you you're not fully in your body anymore it's like you're almost watching yourself or mm -hmm. can't truly understand that mm -hmm. can't truly comprehend in the moment what is truly happening but you know it's something positive absolutely that's what i believe umami memories strives to be or what umami memories actually are those particular moments that you may not actually remember everything that occurred, but you remember how they made you feel. Mm -hmm. And it's something that you cherish in your soul for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know that you just reminded me of a Maya Angelou quote. Oh, you know, you know, any of Maya Angelou's work? I know some a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> it's not what, what it, I'm going to I'm going to mess it up. When you keep talking, I'm going to look for the quote while you talk. You keep telling me whatever you need to tell me because I'm going to I'm right. going to look it up because it's really an amazing quote. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so if I may, going off of the idea of the title and what you had touched upon just now about particularly with the, the tragedy that befell George Floyd and so many other so many other melanated individuals, particularly black folks of my hue, but many other people and also not even just necessarily for race, but for practically any minority group, particularly in where I am, I'm in the United States. So particularly then, in some ways, I've come to believe that I'm going to say forgiveness and empathy. Those are two concepts that are, they both are a necessity, but they also are an expression. And then in a way, I've become to believe that they are an action as well. Because a lot of times I believe, and I thought this myself sometimes, that forgiveness and empathy can oftentimes be seen as a weakness because you, general you, the general you, yeah. are almost trying to understand that other person's perspective without necessarily holding on to or even allowing yourself to feel it, but not necessarily being, I'm gonna say combative per se, or, 
or confrontational towards an individual that you may honestly have the right to. But with empathy over time, as you start to understand why certain situations have occurred and you can start to imagine why certain individuals have become the way they may have become or why they may have done what they have actually done, it almost opens up this feeling of compassion and understanding. And when you get to that feeling, at least for me, it's very difficult to remain in that sort of negative space because now that I understand you and I see where you're coming from, I can empathize with you and see that while you may have had certain circumstances and that what that individual may not have, what that, whatever that ha occurred may not have been the right thing to have done or to have had occurred, but at the very least, I can understand why it could have happened. And from then I can kind of put myself within your shoes to use a, a, a common phrase, well, not a common phrase would say, but I read this book that changed my life when I was younger, when I was in the third grade. Wow. The, the book, yeah, it's an astounding book. Even to this day, I want to reread it just to like recapture fine childhood fuzzies. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, You're so book, sweet. <laughs> thank you. Uh, the book is called, and I, I wish the author's name was, I wish I could recall the author, but the book is called Walk Two Moons. And the premise of the book, there's this walk young, to walk two moons, like you're walking, like oh, walking down the street. Yeah. Walk two moons. Walk two moons. Mm -hmm. no. In this book, um, it's about a, a young girl. I think she's, uh, I don't think she's older than 12. Uh, long story short, kind of a spoiler. Uh, how can I put it? <laughs> she's looking for, she's look, she, throughout the book, she's remembering experiences of her mom and her past life before she moved to another uh another state and a whole nother uh another state another town essentially mm -hmm. and she is of native american descent i believe she's part of the seneca tribe hopefully i said that right the seneca seneca native american tribe mm -hmm. and the character says in the book that what her mother used to always say to her was never judge a man until you walk two moons in his moccasins wow yeah that stuck with me from the first moment I, met, I had read that, you never really want to judge somebody. And everyone's prone to judging. Like on oh, the Myers-Briggs scale, yeah, on the Myers-Briggs scale, I'm an INFJ. So I admit, I can be really quick to be like, you did this, that, 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 and this, and you need to sit down somewhere. But, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, we, all, we all have been in the that. corner. <laughs> exactly. We've all, I'm sure we've all been there. But, you know, I've, I've learned to kind of refine that skill, that, 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 that instinct to throw a dart and at least pull it back and then try and empathize and see where they're coming from. And that's Absolutely. served to provide a lot more joy and overall happiness and, and euphoria wow. in the life. You know, I'm really glad you brought up the book. I actually looked it up because there are people in, there are women in this group who have children. And so this oh. could be a really good book for them. And it's, it's written, it's, it's walk to the number two, but spelled mm -hmm. out walk two moons and it's by Sharon Creech. There we go. Aaron Creech. And I'll post it in the, once we actually uh, finish the, the video, I will post um, the link to that. And I also found the clue, the quote by Maya Angelou. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made, them, made feel. them feel. Yeah. So, sure. and this is that element, I think, that's really important of what you're saying is, when we we can't necessarily walk in another person's shoes literally mm -hmm. but if we can pause and stop what we're doing the judgment the shame the whatever it is chastising and literally just take a moment to think about what could be that person's reality and you know there's a difference between acknowledgement acceptance and liking something mm -hmm. like i don't have to like anybody who hurts my friends or my friends in my community i can stop and think about and have compassion for them i can't necessarily walk in their shoes and i'm not going to say they're right or they're i'm not going to say they're right mm -hmm. by doing certain behaviors that are offensive and damaging and destructive and i mean murder you know and on the other hand i can still have compassion that they were brought up in a way or had certain life experiences that brought them to where they are Mm -hmm. Right. And I think it's really important to know that 
accepting something and liking are two different things. Just because I accept that this is the reality doesn't mean that I'm saying hurting people is okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so with this coexistence of love and hate, life and death, joy and pain, um, oh, I had some others that were rambling off my top of my head, but it, it's, it's really, like you said earlier, it's so important to have both as much as it could hurt sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I experienced the deepest love with my mom and I experienced the deepest grief after she passed. Oh, like it's five nice. years later and I'm still feeling it. But that's because I knew what the love was there, right? If mm -hmm. I never had that love, the grief would be about something else never having had that love, you know? Um, but I think what you said was really poignant, which is that we really do need to have both, even if we don't always like one inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Like there's the, so many different cultures and their, um, and their um, philosophical approaches oftentimes do emphasize that particular balance, like that balance between good and evil, or like in Taoism, that balance between yin and yang, per se. Right. There's always that balance of energies. I know in Taoism, with yin and yang, it's traditionally labeled as masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't, I try not to ascribe character qualities to just gender or gender identities, because there are multiple genders, not just what, you know, mm -hmm. exists within westernized culture, but just that idea of both, um, how can I put it? Like that balance of energies of like anger and sadness and things that oppo that seem opposed on their face, mm -hmm. they balance each other. Absolutely. Like they, I've learned recent, particularly recently over the years, one of my uh, two things uh, in regards to what we were talking about before, just now about walking in other in other shoes. When you mentioned the word pause, it brought up a, a concept that I had written for myself before that I called the triple P's. Mm -hmm. That was just pause, process, and preach. Mm -hmm. So when there was a situation that would occur that I would feel some kind of way about, feel negative, I would first pause. Mm -hmm. to try and tell myself what it is that I'm feeling, to try and analyze, okay, I'm experiencing this because, and then two, that would be the process. Right. I'm trying to work through whatever issue this is, and I might feel offended or hurt because of the way this situation had occurred. Mm -hmm. But then the third process would be to preach, and that would be to tell myself, okay, I understand what this is going, I understand where this could go, I understand what is occurring and why, why I feel this way, mm -hmm. but now I'm gonna preach to myself that I have to focus on the bright side, acknowledge the bad that occurred, but ultimately focus on the constructive to continue to, to manifest joy, to bring yes. about joy. So yes. through that experience of pain, joy comes in the morning. Joy yep. comes right after. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree. 172.3%. <laughs> <No. laughs> I love that specificity. <laughs> They're like, joy is definitely, uh, love is a, in my humble opinion, love is a verb and joy is an action. It's Absolutely. very easy within our culture, especially within Western culture, and particularly. I'm going to speak from my own experience here, but being a melanated individual, you know, Black, um, Panamanian, or Latinx, mm -hmm. I'm a queer person in America as well. Mm -hmm. So that those type of intersectional experiences, the mainstream culture oftentimes would dehumanize my identity or all of my identities just based on all of the different communities that I can lay claim to. But by the nature of my existence, I'm pretty much placed into the other category in that sense. So when you are othered per se, or uh, when you are are considered within, you know, that type of non-mainstream, non-normative part of culture that that the mainstream culture says you're supposed to be, it comes with a lot of challenges. You have to first take the time to resist that categorization and start to redefine and then redefine who you are for yourself. Mm -hmm. And with that comes defining even defining your own version of self-love, your own version of self-care, of your own self-identity, and even your own self-actualization. Mm -hmm. 
without doing all of that work or beginning to do that process to combat those ideas that you're already an other or not normal and therefore not loved or able to be loved, right. one, has to, one has to go through that process. And unfortunately, again, that causes a lot of pain, but once you get through that pain, you get the flip side, the coexistence, the joy is, once again, the joy cometh in the morning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow, I feel like I, I need to hire you as like my marketing manager for <laughs> my coaching business. Like you, you're just speaking everything from my heart. Like that is exactly what I work with my clients on is self-love, self-compassion, building that toolbox, you know, strengthening their self-care muscles, because mm -hmm. that's, that is definitely how you walk through the pain more easily not avoid the pain not avert the pain not skip the pain mm -hmm. but walk through it with grace and so that yeah. you can truly embrace that the other side or or the uh, you know and the other side i mean is like right next to it it's not like exactly the, done with the pain but it's like right, here, right? <laughs> yeah yeah totally totally yeah. it's almost like this i'm starting to think i just just came to me like the prayer sign mm -hmm. there may be a reason to that outside of just like the being you know being a part of the culture and part of many traditions but if you think of it that way almost one hand can represent that joy and the other hand can represent that pain and when you combine the two you see they're right next to each other and they're there's literally confronting, they're confronting each other but with, with exactly, love <laughs> exactly exactly they're coming together they're embracing but mm -hmm. they are both right together right beside each other they're interlocked even if you even bring it a little bit further yeah. They're interlocking with one another. You can't have one without the other. That's so right. Just a, just a random thought. <laughs> oh, you're such a beautiful human. I, oh, I'm so you. glad. I'm so glad that you could be here with me today. So, what I the, when you told us where you're from, I realized you have a bit of a Spanish accent, which means hablas español también. Um, un poquito. Un poquito. Um, yeah, mi, mi mamá, mi papá, um, fue um, nacieron. Oh, mm -mm. Oh, no, I'm getting nervous. Nacieron en Panamá. Nacieron. Sí, na nacieron en Panamá, pero yo um, nací en Chicago, en los Estados Unidos. Ah, so, okay. um, mi generación de mi familia es um, la primera generación que, um, que fue nacido aquí en yeah. the United States. The first to be born here in the United States. Yeah, qué bueno. So, yeah, well, okay. lucky us, lucky us that you were born here in the United States. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> we get your presence, we get your joy, we get your 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 wit and your humor and your your love. I mean, it's you are really. I mean, even in the so for everybody who doesn't know, Gabriel and I know each other through the Artists United group, and mm -hmm. I just can see even in the Artists United group, your love and your humor for everyone there is so pronounced, and oh, I, I feel you. really excited and i know veronica would be really happy like that you're here with me and i'm with you and it's it's just a wonderful experience so i want to ask you one question before i ask you to elaborate on what your umami memories is all about okay. and that question is do you feel like joy from from the time of birth to today has mm -hmm. been something naturally um accessible to you or have you had to work for it hmm or perhaps there's a combination of the two. My first of mine would, would be a combination of the two because mm -hmm. I'm blessed enough to say that I grew up in a very loving household with a loving and large extended family, like multiple cousins. And I grew up in a safe community as well in like a, a small suburb outside of Chicago. Shout out to Broadview, Illinois. In case somehow <laughs> somebody <laughs> a very small, a pretty much a small town almost. Mm -hmm. And I never really, I never lacked for joy, thankfully. Like my, I had friends growing up. I had pretty much just a, a normal life per se. Mm -hmm. um, as I grew older, that's when the insecurities had started to come out. Um, I can admit now when I was trans, when I was uh, transitioning from being a teenager into young adulthood and for the most of my 20s, I was definitely, definitely lost in a sense. I was, I went through, I don't consider it a depression per se, at least not clinically, but I went through a moment of the blues that went on for several years, like mm -hmm. working like crazy, working almost every single day just to kind of barely make ends meet, not really knowing where I was going, what I was doing. And at, at those times, joy at the time I could find moments of joy per se, and I fought to get, create those moments of joy, but at times they did seem to be hard to come by. 
there would be moments of that levity followed by other moments when the pain would seem almost overwhelming or at least uh, at least something that was a constant companion. Mm -hmm. It didn't um, feel temporary, did it? <laughs> precisely. It felt yeah. like something that um, that would be prolonged for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now I can say that joy is more of the norm for me mm -hmm. simply because I've learned to I've learned ways to acknowledge the existence of both. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that I've made it a point to make love as a verb and joy as an action and keep pain as just as a memory or a phase or an omen. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that, is, that isn't conducive to my growth, I believe that I have to just kind of acknowledge that it exists acknowledge like the insecurity that may come with it but then ultimately realize that it doesn't serve me in a constructive manner so, so we politely ask it to take stage left right exactly exactly being mindful <laughs> of it like i need you to go to the left to the <laughs> left and, <keep> left. It <laughs> and this joy can stay right next to me can embrace me can fill my spirit can cause seeds of success and of serendipity and of life to just continuously grow within me until my uh, my edges get a little bit cleaner but you know <laughs> oh, yeah, i start checking my edges <laughs> no they're perfect they're perfect oh well so are yours so there you Thank go you. <laughs> all right so tell everybody what your hope is with umami memories i know i want to support you in growing this business and your beautiful self with it and so, yeah, tell us what, what is it all about? Where do you want it to go? How can people support you in, in making that happen? Oh, thank you. So Umami Memories, um, as I might've mentioned before, savoring stories, song and soul, still Umami Memories. So it's a combination of food and music, family and the written word and how those experiences come together to create memories and experiences that people can share for a lifetime. So with that, presently, I do have an Instagram account, which is one of my main platforms. It's Instagram.com slash Umami Memories. As of now, I mostly post up like images of food that I've eaten around my local area here in Chicago. And I just like to describe the food and the sensations of eating that food and how it kind of creates that type of Umami experience, that type of, um, that type of flavor per se. I've been told it can it can come off as like almost food poetry at times, but uh -huh. that's just a very kind thing for people to say. I, uh, I don't think it's just a kind thing for people to say. I think it's a you. real authentic thing for people to say. Thank you so much. So um, with Umami Memories, I'm hoping to one day in the future create a TV show for it. One that would involve like travel, going to different cultures and different places, kind of similar to rest in peace, Anthony Bourdain, mm -hmm. but also with the music related side as well to experience like that part of joy and that part of family as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a songwriting component to it as well. Uh, I have Umami Memories, I'm registered on ASCAP, which is the American Society for Composers, Authors and Publishers. I'm a wow. budding songwriter. I'm hoping to work with other singers and other artists to collaborate and release music as well. And I also do have a podcast for Umami Memories as well, too. Woohoo! All right. And are you looking for guests? Are you wanting people to come in? And what are you wanting them to, um, what, how, how would they know they qualify to come on your podcast? As long as you have experiences of joy, you can qualify to be on Umami Memories. Woo! Because umami, yeah, umami memories are all about sharing joyous experiences. So mm -hmm. whether it's around like food or family or or uh, anything involving the arts, just existing in the world, a way that a um, cherished memory that you would just love to share with uh, with an audience. I'm all ears. I'm all ears. Fabulous, fabulous. So go ahead and if you don't mind, put your Instagram handle in the chat for me so I can cut and paste it and put it into the other um, feeds. And then, um, woo, we are already at time. I can't believe how fast that 30 oh, wow. <laughs> That was really quick. I know, I know. <laughs> so yeah, I just, again, I really wanna thank you, Gabriel, for taking the time to spend with me, for sharing, as I've said already a couple times, your beautiful self. Um, oh, it, it's really neat to, I mean, I, I, I hope there is a day where all of us from Artists United and all these other people that I've met from around the world can kind of come together and fully 
embrace hands in a large freaking circle and mm -hmm. just really send some love that's virus free to each other. <laughs> Most definitely. So agreed. Is agreed. There, is there anything you want to say as a kind of final word to listeners, viewers, anything that you want to put out there before mm. we say bye? Or no, before we say see you later. <laughs> Definitely. I just think there's just one thing, one other thing that I think kind of sums up everything. And it's just a brief quote, a brief uh, verse from a song written by the late great legend, Abby Lincoln. The song is called Throw It Away. Mm. And I think it's something that we can all cherish. I'm going to attempt to struggle sing it real quick. It's just really cool. cool. All right. Throw it away, throw it away. Give your love, live your life each and every day. And keep your hand wide open. Let the sun shine through, cause you can never lose a thing. If it belongs to you, you can never lose a thing. If it belongs to you. Mm. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Well, we will say goodbye to our viewers, goodbye to our listeners. Thank you everybody for joining us today. And for those of you who are seeing the replay, any of you, don't forget to put comments in the chats, comments in the comment section, and let us know what you're feeling, how it's working for you to learn about coexistence. All right, bye for now, everybody. Bye everybody. <laughs>